Hello, my YouTube family. Three down, two more to go, people. Oh, I like the way this week is going, especially today and tomorrow. She wasn't there today. She's not going to be there tomorrow. That, of course, doesn't mean that the stupid passes, I guess they've extended them another day because we had the stupid people again today. The ignorant, stupid people. You know the ones that call and, um, yeah, somebody called me and then just leave the, the sentence hanging. Uh, who called you? I don't know. Somebody called me from this number? Who, who would normally call you from this number? I don't know. I work with so many people. Um, I forget my coordinator's name. Okay, you know what? Hold on. I just throw you into the ether of the coordinators because... And if I thought I really was going to skate these next two days, oh no. No, no. Um, remember the nurse that um, got me in a little bit of a sticky wicket last week? Or was it two weeks ago? I don't even know if I told you the story. I forget it now. <laughs> it's just, but all I know is that woman, uh, I need to really watch my step with her. Well, she comes to my desk all bright and early. Uh, did supervisor tell you uh, that uh, the project that you're going to help me with? Uh, yesterday, the supervisor didn't tell me anything about this woman or any project that I was going to help her with. And I said, no. Oh, well, here's what you're going to do. It started off that way, people. Like, right off jump. Just, I was kind of nestling into, with my phone, and I was, I'm into playing solitaire in a major way all of a sudden. It's boring for some people, but it's, it's exciting as hell for me. So I was getting settling into another game. Oh, no, no, Nancy, you ain't gonna be playing solitaire for nothing. Nope, not today. Um, it was similar. The project was pretty much the same as when I had to do the envelopes, write the envelopes for, um, the new business manager. Yeah. So it was pretty much the same thing. A whole list about yay thick, yay thick. And although this may not look thick, there's at least 50 names on one page, so. But at least she highlighted the ones that she wanted me to address the envelopes to. But it takes time, people, because you're not giving me the address. You're just giving me the name. So I have to take that name, look it up, look up the address, write the address on the envelope. Oh, it's only about 150 to 200 names. That's all. Hand right. My hands are so cramped, or my left hand is so cramped because I'm lefty. So all day. All day. Now, if it was just writing the envelopes, easy peasy. But since when does a receptionist do just one thing? Write the envelopes answer the phones, talk to the people that come up at my desk, answer stupid ass questions because, you know, I guess they extended the stupid pass from yesterday to today. So it's extended another day. And I have to answer the stupid calls. So I have stupid in person and I have stupid on the phone. So it wasn't until uh, the nurse said that she was leaving at 4.15. And I, I specifically told her, I said, well, th 
you don't expect this to be. She said, oh, no, no, no. It took me over a month to, to make up the list. So I know it's going to take you a while since you have to handwrite everything. So I said, oh, okay. And just to make sure, because she is very particular. Remember I told you the story about the woman who came to see her, but she didn't tell me. That, and I, I'd been calling her and calling her and calling the other one. And, call, and then... The woman, after 45 minutes, said, okay, I'll talk to her tomorrow because I can't wait any longer. And then she left. And then when I finally got her, I told her that this woman had been waiting. And then supervisor tells me, oh, I need you to be me more proactive and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the same nurse. So um, I specifically asked her this time. I said, um... Do you want me to put the material when it's five o'clock, when it's time for me to leave? Do you want me to put the material in my cabinet or do you want me to put it on your desk? Oh, no, no, Nancy, you can hold on to it. You, you got to be real specific with these people. I don't know if it's a Long Island thing. I, I have no idea. But you have to be, you just can't assume anything. Even if it's to their benefit, don't assume. Always ask. I learned that lesson. I learned the lesson. Sometimes you need to learn a lesson the hard way and then from moving forward, continue on that road of doing the same steps over and over and over again. Because these people like to feel superior and they like to feel, you know, above. So you asking them questions, they're like, oh, she's asking the queen a question and I must answer her. So my supervisor is that way and apparently uh, the nurse is that way as well. So you know what? Ain't no skin off my back, my nose, my teeth, whatever. You want to live in that falsehood of superiority? We can play that game. Easy. As long as it doesn't get my ass in trouble. You go ahead and be, you know, queen of the May. We're in the month of May, so you might as well be the queen. So, when she left at 4.15, I immediately stopped the project and continued on with my game of solitaire. I don't know what it is about the game of solitaire. What? Just click and click and click. What? I am having a damn good time playing solitaire on my phone. I know it sounds boring as hell to some people. I am having the time of my life with that game. And Facebooking and, you know. But I only, you know, I just needed to deal. After dealing with the stupid folks on the phone of I got a call. And then you're just going to leave the sentence hanging like that. I got a call from this number. And, well, so, yeah, you got a call from this number. And what? And, and what? I really wish I could answer them that, that way. Because how, how do you call? And then, oh, and then there's, then there's the ones that, I'd like to speak to that coordinator. I'm sorry, there is no coordinator by the name of that, which is what I really want to say. No, people, I did not say that. But I'm thinking in the back of my head, that coordinator. I don't know any coordinator by the name of that. So then I have to come up with, May I have a name of the coordinator, please? Oh, I don't know. She, um, She's in the coordinator. She worked back there. Hold on. I'll send you into the ether of the coordinator's department. I can't with these people. I'm not going to bother to look your name up. I'm not going to bother. No. Let you bounce from coordinator's desk to coordinator's desk until you find that coordinator. Okay? I'm not. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. If you call me and say, hello, my name is so-and-so, um, I forget the name of my coordinator. At least you're giving me your name. 
these people don't even want to ask. They don't. I'm not going to bother because they they call with an attitude. So I'm not going to call. I'm not going to ask you your name because I don't want to. I, I want you off my phone as soon as possible. But if you call me and say, you don't even have to give me your name. Give me the name of the patient that you are working with. I could look that patient's name up. And right next to the name of the patient is the name of the coordinator that you are working with. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of my coordinator, but the patient's name is. Hold on. Tip, 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 tip. Oh, okay, your coordinator is, I'll transfer you to her right away. Easy peasy. But you're going to come and call me. I'm not bothering to ask you what your name is because when you come and talk to me in such a way, I'm not your friend. I'm not your pal. I'm not your sister. I'm not your cousin. I'm not your mother. You start the you start off the conversation with, yeah, I'm calling, not a hello, not a may I speak to. Yeah, I'm caught. So you think I'm going to spend time? In the back of my head, I'm saying, yeah, I'm transferring your ass right into the coordinator's department. Let them figure it out for you. Venting two days in a row, people, about the same thing. I am so terribly sorry. I am so terribly sorry. Let us talk about lips of the day, shall we? Because... This was the highlight of my day today. And everybody was like, Nancy, that lipstick. The liner is Milani Color Statement in True Red. A line filled. What? NYX. Extreme Shine Lip Cream. Spicy. That's the name of the shade, people. Okay. Spicy. I mean, it's not spelled S-P-A-A-A-C-Y like I'm saying it. It's spelled spicy, S-P-I-C-Y. But I like to say it. Spicy. You know, like. Hey. But it's not a real red red. It's an orange red, which makes it spicy. That is the name of this. Okay. All right. NYX Extreme Shine Lip Cream. It's not going to budge. It may fade after about two and a half, three hours. And when I say fade, I mean the shine just dulls down just a little. I refreshed before I left work. I refreshed. So the shine is still there. It will last. This is so damn thick. Look at the thickness of this thing. Look at the thickness of this thing. What? This is probably going to stain my hand. Most likely. This is like paste, but in a good way. I know that sounds like a little face. No, this is in a good way. Because once it's on your lips, it's on your lips. And when I say fade, like I said, maybe the shine will just dull down a little bit. But the intensity of the lip gloss itself or the lip cream will remain. How do you not like that? I said, yes, yes, indeed he do. <laughs> what? This reminds me of Red Velvet. Is that an NYX? No, that's a Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild lipstick in Red Velvet. This is like the lip gloss version. What? This doesn't have to be combined with anything, people. This is, this is it. This is not combined with anything. It's not, I don't have anything underneath it. 
NYX Extreme Shine Lip Cream. I have a couple of these. I pay attention more to the to lip butters, but to the butter glosses. But these lip creams are the ish. I need to maybe um go on Amazon and see if they have other shades. Because this formula, what? This formula is intense. Intense. And you know the intense butter glosses? The butter glosses have a are a lighter formula. The lip creams is a cream. Is 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 a it's a lip cream. It's a gloss and a cream in the, it mixed together because of the gloss of the shine, but the cream of the formula that sticks to your lips. Thank you, NYX. Y'all need to make more of those. I wonder if they have nude shades. You know me and my nudes. I, you know. But this color right here, what? That's all I have to say about that, people. Okay, sit down, because we're going to discuss um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Can I just say, I would love to hang out with Erica. I love, I love that girl. I love her to death. I just do. I just do. I love her. I love Lisa Rinna. There's a, there's a few of them I like. Kyle, I could take her or leave her. Because she can be wishy-washy sometimes, and that in turn turns messy. Erica is on point. She says what she says, and that's just that with that upon that. That's it. That's my girl. Love me some Erica. So last night's episode, they went camping. Like, I don't know. Was that Teddy's idea to go camping? I don't know. So they went camping. I think they just had to figure something out to do for a storyline. But if you notice, like for the majority of the episodes, Lisa is doing her own thing. Lisa Vanderpump is doing her own thing and the rest of the women are doing their own thing. So it's almost like two separate shows. Like we're watching Lisa do her own thing and she's only on for maybe five or six minutes and then that's it. And then the majority is of the girls talking about Lisa and the situation, she doesn't want to be friends with them anymore. And, and you know, she's concerned about the fact that they're calling her a liar and she doesn't want to be, like, she doesn't want to clarify anything. She doesn't want to clear the air. She does. She just doesn't want to be bothered. If you're not with her, you're against her. That's her attitude. So they're like, well, to hell with you then. And we're just going to go about doing what we have to do. But the weight of the situation is heavy. And it's just there. And there really is nothing else to discuss. But, um, I'm sorry, is Camille a regular now? Because she seemed to be on it almost in every episode as well. And she's about to get married and this, this, and that. But she, she made herself really at home. Like she's one of the best, like a regular. She was a regular maybe in what, season three? Season two, season three? You ain't a regular no more. But you just jumping on the bandwagon with the rest of them. And she's talking back behind everybody's back, too. And um, what's that girl's name? The one who was married to Charlie Sheen? Yeah, her. I feel for her. Because when she talks to Camille, Camille talks about all of them behind their, behind their back. And you call yourself a friend. You don't really say anything nice. It's not like you're talking nicely about them. What's the problem? So I sense something in the horizon will go down between Camille and Teddy. Because Camille and Teddy got, mm, but to Camille's defense, Teddy does have a, have a way of just jumping into a conversation that you're not really a part of. She did it with, um, what's that other one's name? The one who's friends with Boy George? Yeah, her. She, she, you're interjecting. She interjects.
herself into the conversation and you really shouldn't she means well teddy means well what she says she means well but there there there's a situation and you you happen to be around the situation where two females are talking to each other or at each other please don't interfere please don't interfere it's like siblings so I've been told, so my father and mother have always told me, when siblings argue or they have a fight, don't try to interfere. Let that shit just keep going. It'll, it'll, it'll clear itself out. But do not interfere. Do not take a side. Do not, mm. And this is what Teddy is doing. She's constantly interjecting. And even though she means well, she shouldn't do it. She just shouldn't do it. So... To Camille's defense, yeah, Teddy has a tendency to do that. And it's not cool. It's not cool. So she needs to stop that. But at the same time, Camille, you need to stop talking behind people's backs. You just do. Just have a conversation with whoever you're having a conversation with and be done with it. Don't start talking about, well, I feel this, this, and that. No, we, we don't care how you feel. Especially if... Now you're 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 pulling somebody into your web. That's not cool at all. That's not cool at all. So the whole camping thing, it was the whole camping thing. It really wasn't an exciting episode by any stretch of the imagination, but it was a camping episode without Lisa. So Dorit, that's her name. Dorit. That's the one that was having a conversation with Kyle and Teddy interjected herself. It, yeah, Dory. So she needs to stop doing it. She really does. And I sent something bumpy happening between Camille and Teddy in the not too distant future. I'm just saying. So if you guys are watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, please hit me up and let me know below what you thought of last night's episode. I think tonight we have The Real Housewives of New York. I think last Sunday, was it Sunday? I DVR'd Real Housewives of Potomac. And Funky Deneva, who I have spoken about before, has his take on the episode I can't watch his video because I haven't seen the episode yet. So I need to get on that right quick. And um, yeah, there's a lot going on. There's, there's a whole lot going on. Okay. So that is that with that upon that. I have nothing else to say. I am done. I'm, I'm so done. It is 6.02 now. I am going to change into my comfy cozies the weather is now warming up to nice spring-ish weather but i think tomorrow it's gonna rain or is that friday this weather doesn't know what it wants to do it wants to be in the 60s then i think tomorrow's gonna drop in the 50s and oh and today was a sad day wplj will no longer after the 31st of this month I won't be listening to WPLJ FM ever again. They sold the station. It's going to turn into some Christian station now. Do you understand how long I have been listening to PLJ? They've made me laugh. They've made me cry. I've been pissed off at WPLJ. I've been pissed off at some of the, the, the hosts of the radio station. I I said I was going to leave. I never really left. This station has been with me, no lie, since freshman, sophomore year of high school. High school was back in the 80s, okay, for some of y'all youngins who uh, weren't even a thought back then. So, PLJ has been really the soundtrack of my life, 80s, 90s, millennium, 
and now it's coming to an end. I have heard, I have listened to hosts, DJs, I guess you could say, come and go. Some I liked, some I didn't like, some I'm so glad have left. Um, but there was one steadfast DJ in the morning show called Todd Pettengill. He used to, and still does every now and then, but he was funnier earlier on when he hosted with Scott Shannon. And it, it would be Scott and Todd, Scott and Todd show in the morning. Because he used to make Scott crack the hell up. And while he's making Scott laugh, he is, I'm pissing in my pants. He's making me laugh so hard. But then Scott left. And Todd got partnered up with, Jade Donovan, I think is her name. So then it became the Scott, the Todd and Todd and Jade show. I think that's what it's called. And Annie is in there and Monk, who I actually listened to growing grow up on the station. He even said today, this is all I know. Because it was his first job, his first professional job, and he never left. So he'd been with the station for like, I don't know, 18, 19, 20 years, maybe, maybe a little more. The, the show, the, the radio station had been on the air for 48 years. And I think Todd said he'd been with the station for 38 or something to that effect. And I'm like, oh my God, I've listened to just about as long. I mean, my goodness, this is a, this is a radio station. Like these people are like my family. First thing, I can't really say the first thing I, I, I turn when I turn on when I wake up. I don't, <laughs> I, I like my peace and quiet, but I, after I, I get out of the shower, I'm, I'm, I'm alive now. I'm awake. So I then turn on my radio and then I listen to Todd, Todd and Jade, Todd, Jade, Annie and Monk. And Monk used to be called Monkey Boy when he first started. And as he grew up, he got married on at, at that station. I mean, he met his wife. He got married. I can't with these. I can't. I can't. I can't watch this. It's a part of my life. It is a part of my life. And you're just going to nip it off, just cut it off, and then... I do not like goodbyes. It's right here. It's right here. I don't know these people. I met, I got to meet Todd once because I called in and I won a thousand dollars. Yes, I did. And it was it, it couldn't have come. My mom, she definitely was behind that win because I had just been let go from the radio station that I was working at after 18 years. And I, just, I happened to listen to this contest that they were running. I, I, they answered my call. I answered the right question. And I won $1,000. My mom was behind that. I don't, I don't want to hear it. I believe it to my soul, to my core. My mom was behind that win. So I got to meet Todd. And he's the one that actually, oh, it was a contest of if if I call the, the your initials, call in if, if your initials are. And he had called and said, the initials I'm going to say are NC. It was like mom had just, so I said, NC, wait a minute, that's me. Let me see if I can get through. She was behind that win. I don't even want, I don't even want, nobody can tell me otherwise. And I got to meet Todd and I even told him, I said, you're the one that called my, my initials. And he said, oh, really? And we took the elevator going down. And so I got to meet him. He was, he was very nice. He was very nice. I mean, wow. It, 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 it's an end of an era, like an end of a radio era, which is part of my life. And it's kind of cool because I'm sort of, well, I used to be part of the radio family when I was working in radio. So 
not that I got to meet everybody in radio, no. But I was part of a radio family and another supervisor. That was the that was really the beginning of my supervisor reign of terror. And it's just been that way since then. That woman, Bitchmeister General, I'm sure I've mentioned her a number of times before. That's the one I call Bitchmeister General. She was the she was she's the initial Bitchmeister General, the one who let me go. <laughs> and funny thing is, a couple of years later, boop. There go Mr. Meister General. They scooted her ass out too. Calm as a bitch. So, anyway, my radio, my favorite radio station. I don't know what I'm going to do on the 31st. When they finally get off the air, they cut off, they say goodbye for the last time, and they cut it off, and it switches to another signal or another station. It's going to be the same signal, different station. I think I'm gonna to have to go to Z100 now, and now Z100 is gonna be my 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 radio station. I always used to kind of bounce back and forth after, because PLJ did have a tendency of playing the same song. Like if it was a popular song, they play it almost every other song, and I'd be like, "Oh my God, I can't hear this song anymore." So yeah, but Race Taylor, I got to talk to him. He would call the station. And we had a conversation, a lengthy conversation, for maybe a good 10 minutes. What? And we're friends on Facebook. What? So, yeah, I'm friends with him. I mean, not really friends, friends. We've never really physically met. But I know Race, and Race knows me. Sometimes I'll post something, and he'll post. He'll make a comment. I'll be like, oh, look at Race. Look at that. So I don't know. I, mm, I think he's on air now, if he didn't get off already. I don't know. I forget what time he's on, but I know that I listened to him on the drive home. So I hate goodbyes. I hate goodbyes. I hate goodbyes, people. I hate goodbyes with a passion. I just, I'm, I'm not good with goodbyes. I don't, unless I can't stand your ass, then you can't leave fast enough. But if I'm, if I'm fond of you, if I love you and, and you have to say goodbye, ooh, it's right here. Every time I even say the word goodbye, right there. So anyway, on the 31st, the final broadcast of PLJ. Mm. I am so, I'm, ooh, I'm right, it's right here. I just, ooh, I can't even talk about it. I can't even talk about it. Let's talk about something else. Let me say goodbye. I was going to say goodbye anyway, so I'm going to finally say goodbye because I really, I can't be, I, I don't I don't want to do the ugly cry. I don't want to cry at all. So let's just keep it moving. Um, it's three down, two more to go. Uh, let me know what radio stations you listen to. I know a lot of you aren't in New York. A lot of you are everywhere. But let me, let me, tell me what your favorite radio station is and a radio station that you grew up with and that you listen to. And I've got, I've got them until the 31st. I've got them until the end of this month. So, and we're still relatively early. We're on the, what, eighth day of this month? Okay, so we're still relatively early. It's actually one month I really don't want to go so fast. But it is what it is, people. All right, so that is it. That is all. I love you. I love my YouTube family. Hit me up. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about everything in this video that I've mentioned, okay? And I will talk to you tomorrow, God willing. Okay? I love you. Mwah. Bye now.